Hello, folks, and welcome to another episode of Sunless Minecraft, where we avoid the sun at all costs. Although not really anymore. Actually, we're doing pretty good on that front. Um, a lot of pro I made a lot of progress between these last two episodes. I just wanted to sort of cover because I finished the project basically. I, I recorded a bit of it, and it just it wasn't that fun. It was a lot of fiddly work and a lot of just you know you knew what I was doing, but it took a while to get it just right. So here I am standing in this awesome-looking ritual circle, uh, which is being displayed, marking that we have a well of suffering. It's really, really cool. And uh, it's great that the um, opus tooltip at the top actually tells you what the ritual is and what it's doing right now. I think that's also similarly awesome. And as you can see, we have 22,000 LP in this altar, um, uh, or uh, rather uh, 21,898 LP sitting in this altar, just waiting to be used uh, with my master blood orb hiding right there. Fantastic, right? Um, this altar got finished. I did the walls a little bit. I mean, it's not perfect. It's not done. But um, this area is in particular done, and I'm very, very excited about that fact. Let's see. Where is the way down? Here we are. Um, this area currently um, is basically an area for collecting and spawning monsters. Um, it's just designed not to hurt the server, but it's not a great system. Uh, we need to improve it soon. So as you can see, we have a uh, pump here and a monitor. The redstone runs from the monitor or rather, this runs from the, from the monitor down this pit channel and under here and up into this dropper. So whenever the uh, pump runs out of power, which you can see it's still got 1,500 plus seconds of power, it will spit out fuel. In this case, uh, immersi uh, like the uh, coal coke that we've made earlier. I actually put 17 blocks of coal coke. I had less than that, actually. I'm sorry, I put 14 blocks of coal coke. We used three to get a million LP. Um, and less than three, really, because we still have 1,500 seconds, which is almost a full block of cold coke. So if we could find a, another source of fuel, this system would run indefinitely. Currently, it's being throttled. This redstone receiver here is coming out and throttling it. If we were to use a little bit of magic to hop up here, we'll see that uh, if underneath here, as I may have mentioned, let's see if we can just kind of remove these steps and maybe hop down a bit. Okay, let me just go like this, and then is that the floor? It is the floor. Unfortunate. Let's just tear up, tear up the roof. You can see here that there is a... I want to be careful not to break the redstone, but... Um, whoop. There we are. There is a liquid monitor right there, and it's set to um, change at 90%. I could change this to 95% if I wanted to, but uh, we'll leave it as it is for now because it's been functioning quite well. And it just gets the altar really close to full, naturally, within 10%, and then caps it off. Um, and then it sends it to that redstone receiver right there. We also... Got to be careful with the system. It is in play. Uh, but we don't want to mess it up. All right. So um, the one other receiver we have is on the other side of this lever. Um, there is one hidden in the wall here, which I won't break, that also allows me to, if I flip this lever, it will pretend that the altar is full. So that's basically a manual throttling switch. Um, I don't, haven't really made anything new yet because most of my effort has been focused on um, finishing this up, waiting for it to complete. I have a million LP now, which means that we're full up and we automatically refill. I've gone mining a few times using my bound pickaxe and it's just this misrefilled itself. Finally, the monsters that do spawn down here, because many of them show up, drop a lot of stuff. So I set up a little hopper hawk here. This is just a really weak mana pool full of a tiny bit of mana, but that's enough to make this um, hopper hawk basically run forever. Um, I then created a void chest. This is just a chest from Railcraft, very, very inexpensive, obsidian and an enderpearl, that destroys anything that goes in its contents incredibly wasteful and I feel a little bit guilty about it to be honest but it keeps the you know it, it keeps the server happy and that's the real key here <laughs> um, because this this build could if it goes out of control cause real problems for the server so we're not gonna do that don't worry about the jumps here and stuff eventually we'll have a better way to get through um, I also took the liberty of doing a little bit more work over here so I reset up this old generator right, which is still just generating stuff. It's consuming lava. We should probably set up a redstone system to throttle it. Like right now, I could, in theory, turn this off and that would throttle the system like so. Uh, yeah, the water would immediately go away, but the lava would stop being consumed. Um, we've also got a void crate just totally full of obsidian. So we're still generating a, a lot more obsidian than we could possibly use. We could use it as a building material at this point, and it might even be fun once we get a faster pick to do it. Um, anyways, there's a power line. This is medium volt electrum. As you, as we got before, we got the duster set up. And so that means that we now can set things up. And we have a ton of various powdered stuff here. So um, really, we're doing pr 
pretty good right now. And this system is now medium voltage. These lasers run a lot better. Let's see, do I have anything? We can just go ahead and dust this, right? So if I toss this in here, right, you can see that these systems um, actually run quite a bit faster as a result. Although for some reason it's taking a little while for the lasers to come online. Um, we'll see that they don't actually run out of power right away, nor does this sucker, which I could probably set up a monitor for. He doesn't run out of power fast at all. And um, those lasers can outperform our storage, but um, it not by too much. So we do pretty well on this front. Um, you can see that the, the storage will gradually go down over time, but um, we also just tore right through that. Uh, so, yeah, we're doing pretty well, I think, overall. Um, this system still consumes lava, even when it's off. So it might make sense for us, you see this here, to go like this and flip that off. Um, and that will allow that to refill. I wonder if maybe we need to go and... We'll have to go see. We may be out of lava over there. But this system should deplete itself of lava soon. We, okay, the problem with the system is that it constantly consumes lava. So we need to come up with some sort of an intelligent throttling mechanism for this. Otherwise, it's just, you know, it's just going to continually, wastefully generate um, power without any use. Oh, and by the way, these are facades. I can make them now. So hidden underneath there. Pretty cool, I think. Um, okay, so... Yeah, that's definitely empty, and that's a problem. We're going to need to relocate our lava generation soon. Uh, I've also carved out this area uh, and used some news, tones, blocks we haven't really used before, because this is going to be a little bit more high-tech than previous areas. We need to need to run some power over here, um, and the goal of that, the reason that we're going to do that is because we're going to be setting up some new storage down here. So we don't have to keep running upstairs, but also just so that we have more useful storage. Because we need to be able to stop relying on these tiny little chests that are actually really quite expensive to build. Let's go back up there. And um, we need to be able to have uh, a way to move things around at a distance. So what I've elected to do, let me see if I can pull up the book. What I've elected to do is um, use the storage system from RF Tools. It's actually not terribly expensive. It's a modular storage system that basically allows us to insert things into kind of like idealized modules. It creates a dimensional space that we can then it can sort through. To make these, we just need to be able to make the modules. Um, but we can also make ourselves a better backpack because I don't know if you've noticed, but this backpack, while convenient, is very small. <laughs> um, and we kind of accumulate cruft in there. And it would be better if we didn't accumulate Croft in there, but also it would be better if it had more room. So we can tackle all those problems simultaneously. Let's see, so storage system. Um, these are the tools you can use to access it. So these are sort of the, the chests, but they're not necessarily where the storage is. The storage actually lies in, let's see, these storage tablets. Let me see, since it doesn't mention them here, um, let's go modular storage. Let's see, or maybe RF tools is the better. Uh, let's see. Here we are. The actual storage modules, each one, uh, they're tier one, two, and three. And, um, they, uh, basically go like one, two, three. This is cool because what they can do is they, each one can store 100, 200, and even 300 stacks of items. For context, the very largest chest we can make, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if you do the math on that, it's like 108, I think it is, or less than that. So, um, I mean, yeah, it's obviously the smallest one is only slightly smaller than our largest chest, right? Um, and otherwise it works exactly the same. And the biggest one is three times or almost three times as big. So I think that's really fantastic. Um, they're not too expensive too. The first one is just a little bit of gold. We're gonna need a lot of wood. So we're gonna need to make a bunch of chests, right? Um, and then uh, we can go, we can upgrade each one with just a little bit more. So 200 seems like a really good call. The last one takes blocks of gold. So I'm not really prepared to do that, but we're going to make a bunch of 200 ones. So, I mean, just off the top of our head, let's say we wanted to double our storage. We could probably still use, well, we don't really need to use barrels, do we? Although there's a lot of stacks here. So let's see. We might want to use barrels for some of this stuff still, but this is 15, 30, 46, 56. So this isn't even, this whole barrel set is not even one, um, not even one upper, uh, tier one module. Right, so this is a lot of stuff, and this isn't even one module. This is even a hundred stacks. So we're gonna make several. So let's say, let's say we did one, two, 
right? Three, four, five, six, seven. Um, one, two, three, four, five. If we made five tier twos, we would have still double the storage, over double the storage we have now and have a lot of room for stuff. So um, why don't we make six even? And then the thing is, is that we're not going, this is the really interesting part. There is this block called the, and you'll see that, I'm sorry if I'm going through this very abstractly at first. These blocks are how you access things, but you can either, sh you know what, it may be easier just to show you. Let me go ahead and make one tier two block and one of these modules. All right, well, what we can do is with this modular storage, plonk it down. Now it requires no power and it doesn't do anything. But if we were to slot in our storage, now you see it immediately changes from amount of stacks maximum, like changes from no storage to 100. And we can do all sorts of cool stuff here. But then if we were to just toss in all of these, right? And then say compact equal stacks, we actually have a searchable index, you can see. And we've you know, gotten this bunch of things. Now you'll notice that well, you know any amount of items takes up at least one stack, so unique types. And then we can just go ahead and grab all of these and put them back out, just so we would a chest. Now here's an interesting thing though. If we were to type in a filter, like so, say stick, then we only see the stick. That is a very useful property. Um, in fact, it, it completely changes things for us. We can also do things like sort on name. We can sh say, don't show groups. So like we could say show groups, don't show groups, it, all sorts of things. Items are shown in list view, in columns. Items are shown with icons. There's a lot of flexibility here. Um, and when you put them together, you can actually, it gets even more interesting. <laughs> um, so we can do a lot of very interesting things with this, uh, but that's not all. So this system, Oh, also, interestingly, if you take this out and you pull it out, right? Now, this is actually in here, right? And you can see it says contents three of 100 stacks. So it doesn't go away. Um, so this is a, a pretty good idea. Like, we're going we're gonna to pursue this. So I'm going to make some level two things. But the other thing that we're going to make is a remote storage module. Now, this module requires substantially more stuff, uh, including a lot of ender pearls. So we're going to have to go ahead and make a bunch of those by transmuting gas tiers. But the, the plus side of it is that um, it will help us out quite a bit um, in terms of moving things around our base logistically. Uh, so let me go ahead and make a few of those things. And I'm going to have to set up a power tab for the remote one to show you how that works before we go on to use it. Phew. Okay. That ended up being a bit more of a rabbit hole than I thought. But first of all, I wanted to figure out why my flux generator wasn't doing so well. Turns out that it was just limited by the piping we were using. I've converted it to using pressurized tubes, using a whole bunch more iron for a pressurized output and pressurized input. Now it's actually moving all the steam it generates, which is 400 millibuckets a tick instead of 82, which means that this system, and I also made a few more turbines, is now outputting 800 RF a tick when necessary. Um, so we actually can radically improve things and our um, MV wire here, it's actually too much production. We only can move 320. So eventually we're going to have to upgrade to HV wire, but um, it's fine because, you know, having a little bit of extra capacity, we could actually run parallel wires up if we wanted to. We shouldn't though, we should just switch. But anyways, I've got this kind of a maze of cable running all the way over here, right? Whew, into this room. Um, and so I've done what I said I was going to do. Specifically, I made eight level two, and we can make another one soon. I just wanted to show you remote storage, uh, remote storage things and put level two objects in here. Now, um, the thing runs into an MV capacitor, which then runs down into some standard piping in the background. Now, what we can do is go ahead and craft a remote storage module. Let me go ahead and pull this up. Um, we can craft a remote storage module like so. Storage module tablet, no, remote storage module. Like this, right? And we have several of them. Uh, let's go ahead and just grab one for the moment. Now, what we can do is, oop, just drop everything that we're holding. <laughs> or we can pair this here. By doing that, we've now managed to compare this. So now there's contents ID six. This one doesn't have one, but this one does, right? And it's linked. Now, if we were to go ahead and put that in here, um, this, the contents of that module are now in this one, which is great. Um, now you might say, Dave, why go through all the trouble of making something that constantly consumes power? Why do that when you could instead, uh, just directly insert these tablets into these remote modular storage, pay no power cost and generally have a good time. Well, let me show you, cause that is a good question. 
Um, what we're going to do first is go around a little bit of uh, a little bit of circuitous route. We're going to click this sucker on um, and ask the system to, which we easily have enough power to run now, uh, to create for us a redstone chipset. Now, the reason being is that these remote modules transcend space and time. Um, right now, they, they only transcend space, but not time, so they can't cross dimensional boundaries. But we can change that too for additional power cost, which we'll do once we've actually upgraded our power network to move the incredible amounts of power that we're actually generating um, already, which is fantastic. Although we've also got to figure out a different fuel source than lava, as I am rapidly making the nether a very cold place. And Oh, there we go. And I would rather not do that. So um, let's see, which order should we do this in? Let's go ahead and first make a storage module tablet. As you can see, I grabbed everything, including a very precious emerald, uh, which I have only like two more of. I'm a little bit concerned about that, right? Um, we're good on power. So then what we should do next is, oh yeah, we're gonna grab uh, six, well, just some obsidian. And we are going to craft a charging table. Now, um, like so, right? Boom. This uses lasers to charge things. Now, the reason that we're interested in doing this is because this module here can be paired with a remote module over here. So if we grab this one, like so, and then we were to craft these two things together, we would get a storage module tablet. And this will allow us at the cost of power to actually pull out like a backpack. It's like a backpack or an ender pouch across space and time. How incredible is that? I think that's amazing. Um, so what we got to do now, ooh, looks like we just picked up some stuff, is charge this because it's not charged, right? And that is a bit of a problem. So we're going to dump a ton of power into this by having our lasers on our MV network just basically sink as much power as they can into it. And um, as you can see, it holds a fair sum of power, right? And then if we right click it, we could toss things in, right? And they're now over there. Uh, this is pretty convenient. And that used 100 RF. So it's 100 RF per operation, no matter how big that operation is. Not the best, but we can make some batteries and stuff to recharge it on the go. And you can see, boop, we're already recharged. This is our new backpack. It's a trans-dimensional backpack, and we can pair it up to a lot of things. So what I'm going to do is make remote modules for everything here. And then we're going to talk about sorting, and we're going to make one more module for, um, we're going to designate one module as our backpack and input dump to the system. We actually may just repurpose our ender chest for that, come to think of it, because we don't necessarily need it now that we're not using it that way. And an ender pouch would be kind of a convenient zero power way to do it, because what we're, our goal here is to make it so that we can dump things into the system and they will automatically be processed. Now, because we have this remote teleportation system, that means that we can pretty straightforwardly um, move stuff around our base. We could just make remote uh, modules, pair them to where we want them to go, and then put them in mo cheap modular storage boxes on site that don't need power. We can then pipe things in and out of the modular storage boxes, because they do respect piping. And uh, for example, let's see, do I have any obsidian pipe on my person? I do, as a matter of fact. So if I were to go ahead and let's see, let's get... Um, Let's go ahead and separate these two things. Yep, uh, we can go ahead and toss it in here, like so. And uh, if we were to put an obsidian pipe on the side and throw, ironically, our obsidian in, uh, we can now look and see that there's obsidian in there. If we were to then pull this out and predictably recraft it here and here, we can see now that the obsidian is in fact in our interface. So that works. That, that opportunity works both ways. So we can actually create elaborate sorting systems that transcend space and have a central place for storing them. That also means that we can do things like move this system, the machine inventory creator system here, which has a bunch of stuff, and we can have that automatically handle a lot of issues for us, which I think is, is going to be really, really useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and set this up. We also need to go ahead and make some filter modules. 
right? Because the next goal is to set this up as a sorting system. Once I've done, I'm gonna do that off camera because it's not gonna be terribly exciting, I confess. What I'm gonna do is until we actually start putting in the piping, we're gonna be setting up what each one of these things should be. I'm probably gonna make one more remote storage and one more set of level twos just for like generalized stuff. Um, and this will be our, and like for utility purposes, and we'll probably move, we'll probably repair this module off to something off the utility purposes. So um, that is the goal here. I think that that's a pretty worthy goal. But uh, we'll have to see how well it actually works in practice, because I've never done this before. Um, and we can hide our actual sorting stuff back behind this wall. So we can just go ahead and clear this up. And then we can find a way to sort things appropriately based off that. Uh, yeah, so let me go ahead and do that because this will be our core storage. I'll add one more modular storage. And um, then and we'll hook everything up with level twos. We'll have, let's see, we're going to have 200 stacks and we're going to have uh, 12 of those. So 24,000? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 12, 20, uh, 2,400 stacks of items available for storage for us. And we'll be able to easily make more of these modular storages, which is what we're going to do next. We're going to set up an elaborate system to allow this blood altar to automatically craft slates for us when it's not charging our blood orb. And we're going to be doing that using Steve's Factory Manager. I'll probably only show a little bit of how that works, as I understand that Steve's Factory Manager is not the most exciting thing to watch when someone's fiddling with flow charts and stuff. I've tended to do those things in live streams thus far, just because, you know, you can kind of talk to people and make it engaging and something like that. So I'll probably do something like that very soon. But once we have that, then we'll be able to pretty much pursue blood magic without limit. Um, and we can work on our tier 5 altar and probably break down this ritual. I don't think we have many more uses for the ritual of binding right now. We have all the tools, um, so we could reclaim these stones, reclaim this space, and maybe think about moving this to other, other spaces. So let me work on that for a bit.